welkom bij deze week's aflevering van Tulip TV. Welkom at this week's episode of Tulip TV. Sinterklaas is coming December 5th, a tradition in Holland, where the man from Spain, Sinterklaas, comes with his helpers, Black Peter, or Zwarte Piet. And they come and they bring gifts for the children in Holland who write them poems and put their shoes out at the chimney with gifts for the horse that he rides on. And they hope that they get gifts, which they get if they've been good. A great tradition. So why is there all this opposition all of a sudden? Because Sinterklaas has these helpers who have black skin and they're called Black Peter. Well, even in Holland now, it used to be only North America, there was some conflict. People not really sort of thinking this was a good thing, maybe discrimination. Well, I think it's pretty crazy because to start off with, Black Peter isn't even have black skin. He's black because he's coming through the chimney to deliver the presents. So I don't know what all the fuss is about. Anyway, I suggest you put your shoe out if you've been good because maybe you'll get a gift on December 5th. Well, here's what's coming up on Tulip TV this week. This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. Canada to Leave is the online community for the Dutch living in Canada and the Canadians living in the Netherlands. Canada to Leave, wherever you live. Good morning and welcome to another great TVA conversation. I'm excited about the potential of electric vehicles to change our city, um, reduce the smog obviously, um, but also if, if we're all running electric and um, there's no greenhouse gas emissions then maybe it's a whole new paradigm for, uh, for getting around the city and instead of um, advocating for everybody being on transit, we advocate for everybody to have their personal electrical vehicle. So my experience when you when you have an EV is that you tend to drive a little bit differently. I know I live on the North Shore and there's a mountains and so I'm tending to use the braking power a lot more as you come along and recharge the battery as you're moving forward. I know in my case I can drive um, 15 kilometers to work and only use seven of the amount that is there because of using the braking. So it's been very interesting to, to drive them and have an experience with them and see how you actually modify your driving. Um, but I think that the the interesting thing about it is that the range anxiety, until we get the charging stations in place and we get uh, the infrastructure that gives people that, that comfort level, that they can know that they can move from point A to point B without that range anxiety and adjusting their driving habits, then we're going to really have this take off because people will know that they can get from point A to point B without that anxiety. What about these charging stations they use, they use in the cold provinces for engine, uh, engine block warm? block heaters yeah, yeah. Uh, d d those charging stations don't work on the on the well, current most, cars most of them are, are those are 110 and in the in the, the challenge with the 110 charging which you can do I mean you can just plug your car into your regular outlet and uh, but the problem with that is that it does take a significant amount of time to charge the battery you know in my experience uh, when I've taken the one of the vehicles to to test them out it's it's about an eight hour charge and you're getting about anywhere between 60 and 100 kilometer charge over that period of time and so if you if you are using a 110 you really have to plan to not be going anywhere or do a partial charge for a period of time so until you get into the 220 um, and, and then half the time or a rapid charge in a much shorter time then I think you're going to be um, certainly you're going to have to have some backup alternatives or you're going to have to resign yourself to that you know that's that's the plan the chart it charges overnight and that's just the way it is um, but most people would go to the to the 220 type of charging 
we're going to see, particularly for transportation, is you'll see a transportation matrix. You're not going to see the single solution where we've seen today. To date, all we've seen is an internal combustion engine right. that was on gasoline or diesel. Right. That's it. When you look, and it's the same for the energy sector as a whole, you will start to see fuel cell vehicles who, that have a slightly different profile to an electric yeah. vehicle, which is and different to, to plug-in Prius. what happened to the, uh, hi the hydrogen vehicles and like, like whatever? you got to get it's, those. It's, there's all kinds of hair on that one, but <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot. And so the technology is there. Fuel cell technology has been around for a long time. It's older than the internal combustion engine. It has technical difficulties, mm -hmm. but engineering is solving those. There's no doubt anymore that the fuel cell can deliver. They, um, they say short distances with the electric part yep. and the long distances with the fuel cell. Exactly. It's, you, you'll start to see so integrated solutions, mm -hmm. both on the vehicle platform, but also the choices that you make. And I think more than anything, what you'll see is regional yeah. diversity as well. We have cheap clean electricity in BC, so right. why don't you use EVs here? Go down to the US, and if, if you're on a ready supply of hydrogen, well, why don't... Uh, well, exactly, because you, halfway, in, most of the way through the US, you'll actually be driving a coal-fired car if you're driving an electric vehicle, which makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. You're better off driving it on premium. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it's you're not going to see one solution. It's going to be tailored to, to the local markets and what people want of their vehicles, and fuel cells will be part of that. This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. Have you ever dreamed of working in the television industry? Why not become an intern for Tulip TV? For more information, please visit tuliptv.com and see the contact page. We look forward to working with you. Hi there, this is Tom Byford reporting for Tulip TV and Dutch the Magazine. We've uh, brought our Dutchmobile way down to California from our uh, home base in British Columbia and we are uh, recording in Newark, California, which is in the Bay Area and we'll be visiting one of the biggest Dutch coffee clubs that meet here in the uh, local mall. This is an initiative that started in Surrey and Langley, BC where uh, large uh, groups of uh, Dutch people came together for coffee every third Wednesday of the month. Well, this is the third Wednesday of the month, and the Krant, the uh, sister magazine uh, to uh, Dutch the Magazine, which is published in Dutch every month, uh, initiated the coffee clubs, which are now meeting in malls right across North America. From here in the Bay Area, where we have the big coffee club, or so we're told, we'll find out, find out in a few minutes, um, meeting in the New Park Mall in Newark, to uh, San Francisco itself, where there's a coffee club meeting in Stone Sounds Galleria. There's a number in Canada, a number in British Columbia, Ontario. Um, there's even one in New Jersey. So uh, this is a way for Dutch people who live in North America to get together once a month. Most coffee clubs meet on every third Wednesday of the month at 10 a.m., uh, which is where we're going right now. So right at this moment, uh, a number of clubs in the Pacific time zone are just getting together. Uh, we're going to show you some pictures. We're going to talk to some people at the uh, New York, California Dutch Coffee Club, which is supposed to be one of the largest. But as I said, we'll find out soon. We're talking to Taya Pex, and uh, Taya is the uh, organizer of the biggest of the coffee clubs. And uh, I'm going to ask Taya, uh, how Taya, how did this uh, come about? How did you start the club? Well, omdat we de krant hebben, had ik hier gelezen dat er zoveel koffieclubs waren. Maar wij zitten in een in een gedeelte. We waren te ver af van iedereen. Zo so, ik dacht, waarom kunnen we zelf niet zoiets proberen? Zo so, toen heb ik. Tom gebeld, of niet, Tom geschreven naar de, van de krant. 
En gezegd, als ik een datum heb en een dag heb en een tijd en een plaats, wil jij het in de krant zetten? En Tom zei, ja hoor, dat doe ik, laat me maar weten. En zo is het begonnen. Toen hadden we de eerste keer, ik had al mijn Hollandse kennissen die ik kon, had ik gevraagd om te komen op de koffie. En we hadden er 15 die dag. En vandaar is het gegroeid en ik telde er vandaag zo ongeveer 60. So that is begonnen in uh, 2009. Hi, we're talking to Delia and Delia just came off work. Uh, she's a paramedic. You spent uh, 16 hours on the ambulances just now? No, 72 actually. 72, amazing. And anyway, you live in Fremont here and uh, there's a Dutch coffee club. Did you even know about that? No, I didn't actually. So, so what did you think when you walked in here this morning? I thought that's a larger group than I expected. <laughs> Because I think on Facebook there were only, I think, two RSVPs for this, so I thought, oh, it'll be quite an intimate group. As it turns out, it's quite a large group. So, so are there are there so many Dutch people in the, in the Bay Area? Why why is it so big? Um, I have an idea that iedereen in the veel mensen in the Bay Area zijn komen wonen toen ze emigreerden. Het is een klimaat dat is ja heel lekker. En uh, we hebben het best naar ons zin hier en zouden ook niet ergens anders willen wonen. Maar er zijn er meer die er zo over denken. Ja. Zo vandaar dat uh, we zijn ook lid van de NESO en NACHO. En NACHO. En dat zijn twee Dutch societies, right? Dutch societies. En er zijn veel of Indonesian people, maar niet alle of them, natuurlijk, want ik ben niet. Maar het is de Dutch the Dutch people die pull together for some reason. And once a month we get here for the coffee. My name is Trace Baams. I'm the president of the Netherlands Society of Northern California, abbreviated the NASO. The NASO is an organization that actually started in the 1960s. It's been growing very rapidly, and right now our membership is about 200 members. Uh, of course, the membership in itself, we're all aging, and we are hoping that the younger generation will eventually take over. The society at this point is actually doing all kinds of activities. One of them is a, a bazaar, uh, Passer Malen, uh, of course the anniversary party annual. What we also do is have uh, the Christmas party, which is also an annual event. And uh, when's the Passer Malen? The Passer Malen is in uh, Fremont, and that is in the Swiss Gardens. That's where we have our Passer Malen. Uh, you're not Dutch yourself? No. So, so where's the interest in, in the Netherlands and the Dutch come from? Oh, well, I met a Dutch man, <laughs> so you know how those things go. <laughs> and then he has a son, so um, he's actually Frisian. So it's a bit confusing because there's three languages going on there. But I picked up a little bit of Nederlands. And, and uh, so you subscribe to our magazine? I do, and I love it. It's a great magazine. I love that it's in English. Okay, that's wonderful because you do know Dutch, right? Uh, ik spreek beetje Nederlands, <laughs> niet zo goed. Did you just learn it from um, from your friend, or did you? Yeah, uh... Just trips to Holland. I've been, I think I've been seven or eight times. Every month, the whole group uh, takes a group picture, and I'm told um, I've got uh, Thea Pex next to me. Is it a, a problem every month to get them all together? It is not easy to get them all by elkaar to krijgen. But yeah, if they the photos, see, then they find it toch wel weer leuk. So it is wel moeilijk, but we krijgen ze. So here we get it: the whole Dutch coffee club of Newark, California, is getting ready for a group photo. There are big 
coffee clubs and there are little coffee clubs and they're all gezellig. Um, this is the Gilroy Coffee Club who came uh, to uh, Newark especially for this event and we're talking to Adriana Leifeit and she is the organizer of the Gilroy California Coffee Club. Um, so this is the club? Yeah, this is the club and we're here special to you and your family to meet Oh, and... <laughs> <laughs> that makes, <laughs> that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, where'd you guys meet? In the outlet center, Gilroy outlet center. In a big hollow room in the Gilroy outlet center. So if there's any Dutch people that live too far away from Newark, uh, but would like to come to uh, to the Gilroy Club. Uh, the second Wednesday of each month and uh, you can meet these wonderful people and it's always very gezellig. 10.30 in the morning. We're talking to Thea, Thea Bay, and Thea writes for the Krant, right? Yeah, that's exactly what I do and I love every minute of it. Oh, that's wonderful. When did you start writing for the Krant? Actually, I started October last year. And uh, these are just little columns, I call them tussendoortjes, in-betweens. And it's something that I've been wanting to do for a long time and I'm just glad that I have a chance to, um, to do that now. So what do you write about? Basically everything. Um, I started out with flowers in my garden and I'm going to have columns about um, my dog and my family, um, regular things in life, daily activities. And, and you had an inspiration, I believe, right? It, it just kind of came falling out of the blue. I mean, I've been wanting to do this for a long time, never really had the know-how and then I got in touch with you at one point and uh, I thought that would be a good start. We're uh, talking to uh, Mariska Henneberg and she uh, is very active in one of the Dutch societies here. Could you introduce the society? Yeah, it's called the uh, Netherlands American Cultural and Heritage Organization. And uh, what do you guys do? Uh, we actually um, try to keep the Dutch community together by uh, having open houses for Dutch people uh, about once a month except for in the summertime. We uh, organize uh, Dutch American Heritage Day. We have Koning in the Ball. Okay, and and we, uh, do you have a website or a contact where we can find out more about you? Actually, uh, right now it's only uh, my email, my email and uh, the president's email address. But we are connecting with other Dutch organizations to be part of the website. Uh, SF Dutch uh, has a lot of the Dutch uh, uh, different organizations together. Uh, to find out if there's a coffee club in your neighborhood, uh, you can go to www.coffeeclub.com or to www.thecrant.ca where we have a listing of all the uh, coffee clubs. And if you would want to start a Dutch coffee club somewhere in a mall in your neighborhood, just drop us an email, editor at dutchthemag.com. This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. Canada to Leave is the online community for the Dutch living in Canada and the Canadians living in the Netherlands. Canada to Leave, wherever you live. Morning. I work for Amsterdam Marketing. Well, Amsterdam is quite special. It's not that large. It's not. We don't even have uh, one million inhabitants. Um, but it offers a, a huge variety of um, activities, things you can do. We have more museums per square kilometre than any other city of the world, and we're quite proud of that. And do think of a museum with modern art, art of the golden uh, age, uh, but also um, a museum uh, of bags and purses, for example. 
Oh, Amsterdam is quite old. Um, I think it's almost 800 years old actually. But next year, um, it's not just Amsterdam we're celebrating, but it's many, many large icons in this city that happen to have a jubilee next year. Uh, it's going to be a marvelous year, very, very festive, and also for a, a broad variety of people. Um, the Ring of Canals is uh, 400 years old then, but also the uh, Rijksmuseum is going to open mid-April. We're very much looking forward to that. That's a beautiful, large museum at the Museum Square with, uh, amongst many, many other pieces of art, there is uh, the famous Night Watch from Rembrandt. Um, and furthermore, uh, the zoo is 175 years old, uh, the Frans House Museum in Haarlem is 100 years old, uh, the Concertgebouw, beautiful building, and also its orchestra will celebrate its 125th anniversary. Um, there are many, many large events next year in Amsterdam and um, we will organize lots of festivities around the canals in order to share that with the people of Amsterdam and of course with the visitors. Amsterdam is known as, as the city of bicycles. Why is that so? Is it very much supported by the, by the city council? Or what, what do the uh, car owners say? The car owners uh, know that Amsterdam is just, it's not made for driving. I just told you it's a very old city and um, it's simply not possible to allow all the cars to get into town. Uh, once you've been here you realize that and you actually appreciate the fact that we do not promote cars in Amsterdam. There are a lot of parking arrangements around the city where you can go to, you, could, you drive there, you park your car there and then with public transport or with a bike um, you go to the central, uh, central city. Uh, we have um, about as many bicycles in town as we have uh, citizens. Where to park your, car, your bicycle, that is of course uh, always an issue. Uh, around the central station and also around other train stations. Uh, we have thought up many different solutions and we're now trying to find out which one works the best. Uh, are there any helmet laws here for bicycle riders? Oh, yeah, they should, yeah. Um, no, there are no helmet laws for bicycles. Now, very, very small kids, they tend to wear a helmet, uh, but here we simply don't do that. Also, when, when you use a, a bicycle for a sportive reason, yes, of course, then you wear a helmet. Uh, you know, the Tour de France, everybody wears a helmet, that's logical. But here in Amsterdam, um, hardly anybody wears a helmet, and it's, uh, we don't have a lot of accidents like that, no. I know about electric bicycles, we have them here. It's very nice for elderly people. Um, and yes, there is a tendency uh, uh, to buy them, uh, but that is more for elderly people or people who uh, cannot cycle themselves. canal tours of course for an hour or for an hour and a half or longer with the dinner uh, but we also have have uh, hop on hop off canal boats uh, they are very very nice uh, for tourists it's a very good way to learn the city a bit and we also have pedal boats um, and the tourists really like those but very very glad to see that many of the canal boats are now electric and uh, I would say when you come here to Amsterdam make sure you get an electric boat mm -hmm. because um, they don't make a lot of noise uh, that way you can hear the guide a lot better and most of all they are so much cleaner for the city so it's very important. We'd very much like to welcome, welcome you in Amsterdam of course. Uh, next year will be a great opportunity because it's be going to be a very festive year. Um, for all the the, the, the calendars have a look at www.iamsterdam.com slash 2013. Hope to see you then. Dag!
This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. Well, that's it for this week. We hope you enjoyed the program. Please remember you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. We solely rely on viewers like you for support and donations, so if you like our program, please go to our website www.tuliptv.com and click on donate. We hope you enjoyed the program and we hope you've been good, so Santa Claus or Sinterklaas will bring you something in your shoe on the 5th of December. And remember you have to sing a song or you have to write a poem. We'll see you next week. Don't see.